At University of Virginia Health System, we're for sharing the latest health information from top minds to keep you and your family healthy. With UVA Health System Radio, here's Melanie Cole. Muscular dystrophy is a genetic condition that can weaken muscles and in many cases can require patients to use a wheelchair. However, there are treatment options available for patients and their families. My guest is Dr. Rebecca Scharf. She's a board-certified pediatrician who specializes in developmental and behavioral pediatrics at UVA Children's Hospital. Welcome to the show, Dr. Scharf. Tell us a little bit, what's muscular dystrophy? Thank you, Melanie. Muscular dystrophy is a genetic disorder that involves progressive degeneration and weakness of the muscles. We often see children with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy in our clinic, which is one of the most common types that we see, one of the nine types of muscular dystrophy. And this disorder involves particularly the muscles, but can involve cells throughout the whole body and tends to lead to weakness over time. Do doctors know what even causes it, and is it something that's present right at birth? Yes, so we do know what causes it. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is caused by an absence of a protein in the muscle, which is called dystrophin. And dystrophin is a large protein in the the body encoded by a large gene in the genome. And we know that absence of that gene or dysfunction of that gene leads to less or alter dystrophin in the muscles. Dystrophin is the protein that helps keep the muscles intact and helps the muscles to contract and be used. When a patient has muscular dystrophy, that dystrophin protein is missing or altered, so the proteins in the muscle and throughout the body are missing or altered, and this leads to the progressive weakness or muscle degeneration that we see. In Duchenne's, what might a parent notice? You know, at the beginning, is this something that, as I said, comes with birth, or is it something you notice once you start noticing developmental or motor delays? Right. Great question. So, yes, the muscular dystrophy is present at birth. It's part of the genetic makeup of the child, and so it has been there all along. However, oftentimes it is not picked up until early childhood. And so we often, the more common story that I see is a little boy who is brought into the office with a history of falling frequently or being a clumsy child or having delayed walking. All those types of symptoms are what oftentimes will present in our office, being a little bit weaker, having low muscle tone. And this weakness, onset of weakness, is usually noticed somewhere between two and five years of age. Sometimes families will notice something even earlier, and sometimes children don't present to my office till six, seven years of age, but the most common, I would say, is somewhere between two and five years of age. This disease affects primarily boys, but it can be seen in girls in rare cases, and children usually have muscle weakness that first affects the proximal muscles, meaning the muscles that are closest to the body of the trunk, and so these would be the hips, the pelvis, the thighs, and the shoulders. Calf muscles are usually enlarged, and so sometimes someone will pick up on that in a child. And, again, these children will be the ones who have difficulty climbing stairs, difficulty with strength involving those, their legs, their arms. By the teenage years, children, the heart and the respiratory muscles are often affected, and so sometimes children will then present with difficulty with breathing or difficulty with endurance due to their heart muscle. Now, when somebody is diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, and the parents are probably quite scared at that point, Mm -hmm. and picturing the worst outcomes, tell us a little bit about treatment options. What do you do for the patients? Do you manage the symptoms? Do you deal with the chronic complications that might end up? What do you do for them? Mm -hmm. So currently, we do do a lot of treating the symptoms of muscular dystrophy to the best of our ability. We manage muscular dystrophy through a variety of specialties. So one of the first line is therapy. And so children benefit from physical therapy to keep their muscles in use, to keep them active, to keep stretching their joints so they don't get contractures. They also benefit from occupational therapy, which helps with adaptive and daily living skills. It can allow them to continue to move around, to get in and out of their bed, to get through the house in order to feed themselves. All those things are things that occupational therapists would work on with a child. Children with muscular dystrophy also 
sometimes have some delays in their language or their cognitive abilities. And so speech and language therapy can be very helpful in helping with communication as well as sometimes with feeding. And we certainly benefit from having them as our, in our team. Pulmonary specialists are also really important in treating muscular dystrophy. They help monitor the children's lung functions and to keep their lungs functioning as best as possible. So children will have pulmonary function tests each clinic visit to keep an eye on how their lungs are functioning and sometimes we'll give medications or different lung exercises to keep the lungs as healthy as we can. Next, children see cardiologists to monitor their heart function since dystrophin is a protein that's also found in the heart muscle. And so we keep a close eye on children's heart function and then are able to provide treatment as needed if there is any difficulties with the function of the heart. Next, children will see the orthopedic team, and that's very important to assess for things like scoliosis, contractures in the ankle joints, fractures, and they will provide treatment when necessary. Currently, the medication that we use for muscular dystrophy is prednisone. It's a medication that has been shown in many, many studies to allow boys to walk longer, use muscles for several years longer. So it really has shown to be a life-sustaining medication that allows for function for several more years in many boys. The Muscular for Dystrophy Association and other groups are actively involved in research and development for new drugs to treat muscular dystrophy. And I'm real excited about that. I, I'm thankful to the Muscular Dystrophy Association and the NIH and everyone else who funds research in muscle disorders. I think it's so important and so needed. We need many more medications to help treat children with muscular dystrophy. Tell us how these children grow. What happens as they grow that changes that parents can, you know, look toward? And while you're speaking about that, you, you know, mentioned the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Tell us what research is going on out there. Sure. So over time, we follow children in our clinic, and we keep an eye on many things, including how they're growing and developing and learning and thriving and are they able to do everything they're supposed to do throughout their day, the things that kids do. Are they able to play and go to school and be part of their families? And, and so we monitor those things closely to see if we can provide any help or any assistance to allow those things to happen on a daily basis. And so a lot of times we'll see that children will continue to make good developmental progress through those first few years of childhood. And then sometimes often around five, six, seven, we'll see a little bit of a plateau in skills where children aren't able to continue to learn new motor skills and sometimes begin to lose some skills. And usually somewhere around that time is when some things become harder, like running, jumping, walking. And so that's often when we treat with prednisone if we haven't been all ready to try to prolong some of the muscle function that we have. And then we often do need some aids for mobility. So sometimes children need to use crutches or walkers or wheelchairs to to enable mobility. And and those can be really helpful things. I think using a wheelchair to enable a child to go out and be in the park and go through the halls of school is really great. It allows them to participate in community so much better. And so I think those things are very important. And we try to keep an eye on what equipment would be most helpful for each child and how can we help them to function their fullest. The Muscular Dystrophy Association is doing new research into different types of medication that can be used in order to treat muscular dystrophy. Some of these target the gene particularly. Some target the dystrophin protein, seeing if they can make that stronger or replace that within the muscles. And some come about trying to make other parts of the muscle function better so we can account for that lack of dystrophin in the muscle. And all of these things, I think, have some promise in terms of what will be able to be helped. Some trials, there are trials going on for some early phase medications, which I'm very hopeful will be shown to be somewhat effective for these children because we we certainly need a lot more medication options than we currently have for children with muscular dystrophy. So I encourage everybody to support the Muscular Dystrophy Association or just medical research in general. I think it's very needed. Thank you so much. And Dr. Rebecca Scharf, tell us why patients and families should come to UVA Children's Hospital for their care. Sure. 
So here at UVA, we have a multidisciplinary clinic to help care for children who have muscle disorders. We've recently opened the new UVA Children's Battle Building, and that's where our clinic is located. So when children come for their appointment to the Battle Building, they're able to see first a developmental pediatrician, and we're the ones who take responsibility for overseeing the medical care, as well as to be sure that children are receiving the therapies and the services that they need in their communities. We're the ones who monitor the children's developmental progress. We monitor their growth to make sure that's going well, and we keep an eye on their learning over time to see if they're achieving all that they possibly can in school. At UVA's Battle Building, the children are also able to see physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech-language pathologists in our therapy areas and gyms, which are a fun way for children to connect with our therapists and sometimes develop plans for therapies back in their neighborhoods or schools as well. We also have evaluations for the equipment needs that children have, and they can come to Equipment Clinic and try out various pieces of equipment to see which would be best for them. We also have orthopedic surgery in that clinic, and Dr. Abel does a wonderful job of caring for our children's orthopedic needs. We're very thankful to have that all in one place. When children come to clinic, they are also able to get their pulmonary function tests done at that visit so we can keep an eye on their lung function. And pulmonology, as well as cardiology, are also in our battle building. And so, therefore, children could see those specialists if needed on the same day and monitor their heart and their lung function. In addition, we have nutritionists in the clinic, so they often help us with monitoring growth and providing some good input for healthy diets and exercise for our children. We also have endocrinology and a fitness clinic, which is a wonderful resource to have. And so children, oftentimes one side effect of prednisone is weight gain, and so children can be monitored with our fitness clinic and our nutritionist to see how well they're doing there. We also have teachers in this clinic who help us with education and interfacing with the children's schools so we can make sure that they're receiving the appropriate services in school and so we can communicate with schools about how is this going and is there anything we can do to support this child being able to participate fully in school, which has been wonderful. And we also have m- members from our Department of Neurology who come to this clinic and have been helping manage some of the other neurological symptoms that children may have, such as headaches or seizures, or which not all children with muscular dystrophy have, but when they do, it's nice to be able to have neurology there. And some of our neuromuscular specialists have been coming, which has been wonderful chance to work together and care as best as we can for these children. So I found the UVA Children's Hospital Battle Building to be a great place to work as a team and be able to care for a child in a very multidisciplinary setting, which has been helpful for me and helpful for, more importantly, the patients to be able to receive more comprehensive care. Thank you so much, Dr. Scharf. What a wonderful approach for patients with muscular dystrophy and their families. You're listening to UVA Health System Radio. For more information, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for listening.